Hey, Jody here. In this week's video, we're going to be doing a butt joint, a 1G square groove weld, 43 thousandths thick. That's just a little bit over one millimeter. And I'm going to be showing a technique called backstepping. So let's do it. Carbon steel doesn't necessarily require a back purge of argon, although it welds a lot better with the back purge. Next best thing is to weld it with backing. I'm clamping it down here to a big thick piece of aluminum plate. However, the first plates that I run here, I'm going to use some spacer plates to get it up off that big heat sink. It'll still provide some amount of uh, chill and, and uh, heat sink, just not as much as if I clamped it directly down to the aluminum backing. I'll do also do a plate where I clamp it directly to the aluminum backing. When I get tacks on the end of sheet metal like this, I add a few extra dabs of filler metal, little button tacks. That gives me a little bit of extra time when I'm welding to or from to keep from blowing the end away. So you see I'm, I'm putting two or three little dabs here, more than just the absolute minimum. Once I get the tacks done, I'm going to start around the middle and weld to the end. 55 amps full pedal. I'm going to start in the middle, weld to the end, and then I'll start on the other end and weld to the start of the previous bead. 43 thousandths thick, 55 amps, a number 8 Furic Pro Cup, 20 CFH. There is a rule of thumb in TIG welding that it takes 1 amp per 1 thousandths of inch, or 40 amps per 1 millimeter, to get full penetration. And that holds true up to about 100 thousandths thick. And honestly, you're not going to be doing full penetration welds on TIG weld on sheet metal much, much more than 100 thousandths without putting some kind of bevel on it. Now that rule of thumb, 1 amp per 1 thousandths, is for carbon steel. You need less with stainless, more with aluminum. And if you use chill bars with any of it, you're going to need more amperage than you would without chill bars. Let's start here. I'm going to initiate the arc around the middle of the plate. I should get my puddle going in less than 3 seconds. That's a good rule of thumb as well. If it takes you more than 3 seconds to get your puddle going and get moving, you probably need a little bit more amperage. 3 second rule. Don't you love those little rules? All right, when I come to that button tack, that gives me a little time to start tapering off the foot pedal. You notice I leave the rod in there just a little bit here and there. That prevents from blowing away an end on something really thin. Once that's done, I immediately go back to the other end, and I'm going to start on that other little button tack and then weld to the previous bead. Now this little button tack I have on this end with an extra couple of dabs of metal also helps me light up on and prevents me from curling it under, blowing it away. That really helps on thin metal. And as I tie in here, I'm going to overlap a little bit, add less and less filler as I keep moving and taper off slowly. This is cold rolled steel. You can't hardly make it crack if you, no matter what you do. However, if it was chromoly or some kind of hardenable stainless steel, it, it would crack in the crater. So tapering off slowly is a good idea. All right, full penetration there. Not as good as with argon shielding, but a lot better than without backing. And for really thin metal, like say in the O20 range, backstepping like this in several little really short runs, about an inch long, can really limit distortion by locking things in place. It's just a technique that's useful for thin metal. Now here I'm not going to use any spacer plates. I'm clamped down directly to the big thick aluminum block. I've got a slight gap in there. Most of that gap will, will draw shut just from these two end tacks. I'm doing the same thing. I'm putting just a little bit of extra metal, a little few extra dabs on each end. Again, I'm using 045 filler metal. And I'm welding that first run, and it's requiring 70 amps at full pedal. And honestly, I wish I had 5 or 10 more amps here. I can tell it's just I'm having to go a little slower to, to be able to ensure penetration. However, you can kind of see that it's pulling the heat out a little bit better. A little bit less discoloration, more, a little bit more gold and blue in there where I started. That doesn't really matter on carbon steel. It's just something to notice, pay attention to. Look how I'm shaking here. <laughs> I guess the point here is that you can shake and still make a decent weld. But I don't know if I wasn't propped up or I was in a jam with the camera in my way or what. But man, when I was editing this, I'm just noticing I really got the shakes. Now this piece got full penetration end to end as well. It looks a little different 
it's much more silver and shiny because it was shielded better by being clamped down directly against that chill bar. Probably a little less distortion also because it pulled the heat out, but it's not better, it's not worse, it's just different. If you're going to use chill bars, you're going to need more amperage. Chill bars as well as backstepping can really help in limiting distortion. Well, that's it for this week, a nice short and sweet video. I support these videos with my online store at weldmonger.com. You saw me using this Furic number 8 clear cup in this video. Those are available on the store. What that does for me, my eyes aren't what they used to do, and it just sort of lights an extra inch or so ahead of me, lets me kind of see where I'm going. I need that. All right, weldmonger.com. See you next time.